My friends, I thought Gigabyte killed the Aero lineup of motherboards, but this is an exciting day because we've got the Aero DZ890 for creators. This is the only motherboard that competes with Asus ProArt. It's better in quite a few days. So if you've been looking at the ProArt and thinking, I'm going to get that one, pause your ordering because this guy might be the better one. There is so much to talk about. This is so exciting. I'm happy. Gigabyte, thank you for doing this. We gotta take a closer look what it can do for creators and why this is exciting. Let's go. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. Okay, we haven't had an Aero D since Z690, which was quite a long time ago. Is it 2021, 2022, something like that? Let me put the motherboards on the sides. Then take a look what's underneath. Installation guide, some other manuals, vision link, Thunderbolt connection guide. On the left side, we've got a beautiful white Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna, Gigabyte G connector, which is for the front panel. You put all the tiny little cables of your case inside there and then pop it onto the motherboard. Saves you a lot of a DIY and a hassle. And on this side, we've got two white SATA cables, one of them angled and one of them straight white display port cable. We've got some thermal pads for M.2. One, two, three, and four. I don't know why you give a spare one. We have a microphone. It's for the sensors really to measure the loudness of the case in certain parts. A temperature probe and another temperature probe. The interesting thing is there's only two SATA cables, even though there's a lot more ports on the motherboard. Firstly, looking at the design, it's pretty obvious it's a white motherboard. So if you have a white case for a creator build or a white themed PC build, this is one of the nicest motherboards and a top end motherboard that you can get for that. Super, super clean, really, really nice. I'm enjoying this a lot. Creator series, they've continued the Aero D since the Z690. As you can see, the design very very similar but just a lot of improvements over the years have been made i'm liking that the other thing you can see is this is not an atx motherboard which the pro art is if we compare it you know directly to the competition there's an extra inch and a bit on this motherboard that you have to fit inside a case which might be a trouble for you but it's important thing to keep in mind we've got the lga 1851 socket which supports the core ultra 200 series but also the next one so this this is quite interesting for the Intel builds and for DIMM slots. The interesting thing about these DIMM slots is that it supports up to 9,500 megahertz DIMM sticks here. That is crazy and that's around 500 megahertz higher than the Asus ProArt. It's also related to your IMC of the CPU so don't expect it to hit with any CPU and any RAM stick. You just have to have the particular hardware but on specs it supports higher. Now on the design I do have a little criticism here which is this bit here I don't think this has properly been glued in here so when I push this in there's a little bit of uh, I'm not sure if you can see especially in the b-roll you can see there's a random bit here that isn't properly like onto the bottom bit so this kind of a frosty window I don't think the glue hits this part of it just looks a little bit odd it's going to be behind your a GPU and it could be just my model but it is an issue now let's take a look at the motherboard headers and there is a lot of exciting things going on. If you've been missing certain things from ProArt, this motherboard probably is going to give it to you. Next to these power connectors for the CPU, which you've got two 8-pin EPS connectors, and then obviously the 24-pin on this side, you've got a PWM fan header. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight connectors all together. In terms of wattage, there are two amperes, 12 volts, 24 watts, all of them. And as far as I can see, they don't share any 
curves in the BIOS. You can adjust all of them separately and there is none of the AI or pump fans that just run 100% of the speed all the time. You can adjust everything, which is good news. Then next to the fan headers, we've got RGB headers. There's one five volt header over there and a few more on the bottom here. Two more five volts and one 12 volt in here. Four headers all together. Then moving on to this corner, there's some good things going on. We have a QLED here for the Dr. Debug. We can see some error codes, which is amazing on a high end motherboard like this. This was one of the biggest criticism of people for the pro art. They don't have that. Whereas on the Gigabyte, you're going to get that. You also have a physical power reset and Q flash button on the motherboard that you can hit if you needed to, as well as these uh, status LED lights. So when you're booting, you can see, okay, are we training the RAM? Are we stuck on CPU, VGA boot? Where's our issue? It's nice to see it in there as well as error code, which we have in here. This little header over here is for the microphone. Remember the little microphone that came in the box? You plug it in there and then in your case, wherever you want to have it, you can adjust the fan speeds on BIOS, for example, according to this microphone. So you can adjust the fans and turn the fans according to the noise levels. And then talking about noise and temperatures, there's two more temperature sensor headers in here. Now, moving down from the side, this over here is an angled USB-C header. If you look in here, and this is no ordinary USB-C header. This is Thunderbolt 4. It's also USB 4 compatible. So any USB kind of protocols, 3.2 Gen 2, everything just can go into there, which is amazing. Now, it's a little bit of an odd one to put it on the side there rather than on the back of the motherboard, but there is an extra USB-C header. So if you have a cable or something like that, you can extend it, I suppose, or put it on one of the displays inside a PC case, but feels a little bit of a waste of USB-C in here rather than in the back of the motherboard. If you wanted to have inside the case panel, like we've seen some of the Aorus boards where you have an HDMI port there, this here can support display output as well. Feels like a little bit of a waste because it's so powerful. It's Thunderbolt 4. Then talking about front panel headers, there is two USB-C front panel headers and these offer both 20 gigabits. They're USB 3.2 Gen 2, both of them. That's ridiculous. One of them is connected to to the CPU and then one of them comes from the chipset so it's not a hub they're separate both of them can run at you 20 gigabits per second which is amazing then you've got two front panel USB type A connectors but these are both five gigabits in speed again angled SATA cables eight of them which is amazing usually you get four maybe six at most this is eight so you can build an insane workstation here if wanted to. Let's move on here. You've got your front panel connector and headers in there. And then on top of there, there is two headers. One of them says clear CMOS, which is directly above the front panel header, right a little bit on the left. The right one there is actually a reset header. So extra reset header, which also is these bottom headers there. So I don't know why there's these there as well. So let's say you've got your front panel connected in there and you're thinking, okay, is it gonna work? Interestingly, you've got a reset button in there and a reset header header is there so lots of different ways to reset your system then moving here to the left side we've got two usb 2.0 headers one tpm header you've got an led demo here so if you've got this on a display if you're some kind of manufacturer or retailer you can plug in this there get some power to this probably five volts i'm assuming and then you get you know led demo maybe 12 volts as well i don't know and then front panel audio header just over there let's talk about the m.2 slots here as you can see you've got this front slot in there with an absolute chungus of a heatsink that is the same level as the side vrm cooling there and if i just undo this interestingly this works the other way Sometimes you've got Hemda 2 one way or the other way. They've flipped it. So we open it that way. And this is a big, big chunk of metal. As you can see, they've cut these out to make the actual area of the cooling a little bit bigger. And you can see the thermal pad underneath here. Now, interestingly, there's one put on the bottom there as well. Let's take this heatsink off as well. It's completely toolless installation. Pull that out. And then we pull it this way. Again, a big slab of metal. As you can see, again, thermal pad on top side as well and bottom side. So you get four extra thermal pads just in case you swap and you kind of ruin one of them. But these are the bottom ones if you need to install anything, which is fantastic. You get a little bit more than ProArt offers. Interestingly, there is four M.2 slots. ProArt has five, but here the top slot is PCIe Gen 5 and goes directly to the CPU. It doesn't share bandwidth with anything, so you're not going to lose anything else. Then 
this first slot in here goes to the CPU as well. Boom, doesn't share bandwidth with anything and it's got PCI Gen 4 X4 slot. These two are also PCI Gen 4 X2 slots, but they go to the chipset. Underneath this heatsink, if you look just into there, there are the C M.2 slots kind of names in there. Unfortunately, you can't see it very well. And I wish these names were printed like on top here so you could really see like what you're doing there. But in there, you can see that they've named that this goes to the CPU, that goes to the CPU, but these go through the chipset. The only downside is that this bottom M.2 shares bandwidth with this PCIe slot on the bottom there, which both of them are PCIe Gen 4 X4. So if you have one, the other one doesn't work. Or if you've got something plugged in here, then the other one doesn't work. So you get either one of them. Talking about PCIe slots, there are three. The top slot, as you can see, is ultra durable there as well. And then the second slot, and then the bottom slot. The top slot is PCIe Gen 5 X16. And then the bottom one is PCIe Gen 5 X8. If you've got something plugged into the second one, the top slot starts to go X8 as well. I guess this spacing fits if you want to run gigabytes RTX 50 90 master ice white gpus in here oh, that will be so beautiful maybe we can make this video happen oh my goodness and this big slab over here is cooling down the z890 chipset which is pretty powerful as you can see a lot of the things are happening here do you think this is the end no let's put these heatings back and look at the io because my goodness this is amazing and did I mention that the button over here is for easy access to the PCIe lock? So if you've got a GPU in there, press the button, boom, it comes out. Looking on the top here, what's going on then? Starting from the top, we've got DisplayPort in. Remember the white cable that came within the box? You put this on your graphics card and then DisplayPort in, and then you get video output through these Thunderbolt 5 ports in there. Now, interestingly, this is a little bit confusing for me. Usually, you also get video output if you have an iGPU on Core Ultra 2 85K, for example. I'm guessing, don't quote me on that, and if you know this, please correct me in the comment section below, that if you have a KF CPU, and obviously you don't have integrated graphics on that CPU, but you still want video output over USB-C, then you can put the display port in, and then you still get video output over Thunderbolt through your graphics card. If you've got an iGPU, you probably don't have to connect the display port. It's not really clear on the motherboard manual. I couldn't find it in there with the first glance, but I'm guessing that's how it works. Anyway, you get video output over USB-C there. Then you've got a HDMI out. If you have an extra monitor or something like that, you can get video output over there. These two USB-C ports are Thunderbolt 5 and Vision Link ports that Gigabyte also adds in there. They're also backwards compatible with USB 4 and any of the USB protocols. So if you have any USB device, it goes in there. Now, I have had that with Asus previous ProArt motherboards before, that when plugging in USB-C device, that's a normal 10 gigabit USB-C, because there were Thunderbolt 4 ports, it didn't really have that support. And I was struggling because only the front panel USB-C was working really. Like an enclosure like that, that I'm recording on this camera, I couldn't get this really working behind there. But here, everything is compatible, which is amazing. And there's also power delivery up to 60 watts and it's 80 gigabits per second speed because it's Thunderbolt 5 and boost speeds of up to 120 gigabits per second and also supports pen display support. So if you got your Wacom or Huey on, Huion, Huion tablets, then as a creator, this is the motherboard to get. So two Thunderbolt 5 in the back and then one Thunderbolt 4 USB-C in there. Then we've got these blue USB type A ports. These are five gigabits per second. And then there are six red USB type A ports. These are 10 gigabits per second. Then we've got line out, mic in for audio ports. And finally the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connector for here. This is Wi-Fi 7, by the way, as well. For LAN ports, you've got dual 10 gigabit ports, which is insane. And this is not like sharing or anything, the separate controllers, you get really fast networking. The ASUS port only has 2.5 and 10 gigabits. This here, you can get 20 gigabits per second network connection and on top of that if you want to use the thunderbolt 5s there as well you can get even more but that is insane all together what do i say this bot is probably one of the best created bots that are out there 
on the market right now. Now check out the pricing in the video description below through the link. Let me know what it costs to you and if this is available and how does it compare to ASUS ProArt. One of the things that goes for ASUS ProArt Z890 is that you get three months for free Adobe Creative Cloud membership. So if you're already paying for that, it's kind of tempting to go with ProArt just because it is that much cheaper. Three times $60 you know every bit helps this error d doesn't support that the second downside that i have about this motherboard is the amd version i wish there was an x870e as well gigabyte hasn't done amd versions of these creator motherboards and we know how good amd is especially against the core ultra series and then the 50 series combo amd is amazing why isn't there amd version of this and the third downside is i wish there was also a black version of this i guess gigabyte wants to separate themselves from pro art from being black and then if someone wants white they go with this one but white themed pc builds there are actually a lot less of them than black versions and finally gigabyte thank you so much for keeping the aero d alive i thought we're not gonna get it i knew we had it for threadripper but i thought for consumer market or the pro consumer market with this we're never gonna get it but we got it come on if you want to build yourself the best bank football creator pc whatever budget you have all the way from 700 dollars go check out the build guys in the video description below and if you have any questions i'll always get back to my minect messages in 24 hours if you enjoy this video consider subscribing and hitting the like button it actually makes a difference and i'll see you in the next video bye bye